message called prospering God or robbing God. And there's nowhere in between. You're either prospering God or you're robbing God. And so we're going to be talking about that. God is worthy of all honor and all praise. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people get so caught up in the affairs of life that they neglect to honor him. They, they don't uh, give him the honor due. And uh, we know that we could start from a, um, an elementary level and say when we worship him and praise him and give him thanks, we are honoring him, we are prospering him. And uh, when we fail to do that, when we fail to worship him and praise him and give him thanks, then we're robbing God of what he is due. But there, we're going to look deeper, though, at, that, at the concepts here. Uh, and that relates to God's will. Are we fulfilling mm -hmm. his will? When you do God's will, you are prospering him. And when you do not do God's will, you're robbing him. Oh, wow. So that's what this message is about today. Are we prospering God? Are we robbing God? And there's nowhere in between. It's just one or the other. And uh, we all have to make that decision that we're going to prosper God. And I want to say that um, from 1 Corinthians 10, 31, we're supposed to give him glory in whatever we do. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be glorifying Jesus. him and that's going to be prospering him so we're going to just look first at the concept of prospering him we'll look in uh first corinthians 10 31 and i'll ask you to read this so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do do it all to the glory of god hallelujah he's worthy and we need to glorify him in all that we do and uh, then the next we go to uh proverbs 3 and we see that he's uh, that he's worthy of honor of our wealth and our first fruits. Mm -hmm. Read this year. Proverbs 3, 9. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all of your produce. Oh, hallelujah. So, you know, <clears throat> God blesses us. And what are we going to do with what we've been blessed with? Are we going to say, well, this is mine. I, I've uh, earned it and I'm going to hoard it up. You know, there was a man that did that. Uh, he he had uh, so much wealth, and he he was just going to hoard it up. And he he thought it was all by his hand that he had gotten it. So he was going to tear down the barns that he had and build, build bigger bigger ones. barns. Uh, but he was not rich towards God. And uh, <laughs> what we really want to do is to be rich towards God. I'm not talking about how much money you have, a little or much. It doesn't matter be rich towards God, and it comes from an attitude of the heart. And it's not just uh, uh, in the Old Testament. It, it runs into the New Testament, too. We see this in the First Peter 3, uh, 15. about honoring the Lord. First <laughs> Peter three fifteen, But in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who ask you for the reason for the hope that is within you, yet do it with gentleness and respect. Okay, so we honor the Lord. Honor the Lord. Honor the Lord with our substance. Honor the Lord and our substance is our faith, but honor our Lord, Lord with our wealth and our first fruits, whatever he's blessed you with, honor him. He's yeah. worthy yeah. of all glory and honor. And so let's, let's think about robbing. Is, is it possible to rob God? Well, Let's look at Romans 1, uh, verses 21 through 23, I believe. And, and it, it talks about people who knew God, but they didn't honor him mm -hmm. as God. And what does that do? Let's look at this. Romans 1, 21 through 23. For even though they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give him thanks. But they became fruitful in their reasonings, or their minds became Futile, uh, futile, futile, unprofitable. <laughs> Your mind will become unprofitable. And their senseless hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became as fools. And they exchanged the glory of the incorruptible God for an image in the form of a corruptible mankind or an idol, such as birds, four-footed animals, are crawling creatures okay so 
They knew God. This is about people who knew God, but they wouldn't honor him. And so they became, they became dark in their hearts mm -hmm. and their thinking. They were, un, they were futile in their thinking or vain in their thinking. And they began not to honor God, but to honor, uh, let's say, statues of man. Uh, or lift up men on pedestals or, or lift up uh, some creature upon a pedestal and, and worship him. They, they failed to worship God. That, that was the problem right there. God deserves all honor and all praise. And when you don't do that, then your mind is affected negatively and your heart is darkened. And then you begin to think you're wise in worshiping mm -hmm. other things that are not God. Right. That, it's a uh, indication here of people who are robbing God of the honor uh, that he is due. Uh, now it also says in uh, Malachi 3, 8, that we can rob God. Let's look at that verse. Okay. Uh, would anyone rob God? Yet you are robbing him, but you say, how have I robbed you? And the answer is in tithes and offerings. Oh, people do rob him. And uh, I may have mentioned this to you earlier, but uh, there was a couple that we know very well. And uh, they had their own little thought about tithes and offerings. And, and uh, they made this statement to me that uh, everything they had belonged to God. They gave mm -hmm. everything to God. And uh, I tried to convince them that that was, that was not the right thing to do. They said they gave everything to God, but then that gave them a license not to give him anything. Right. And, and that's a... And that, to do with everything what they wanted to do with, with it. To, to do what they wanted to do with it. It wasn't what God's will was. Well, and that, that couple has filed for divorce after 28 years after having two... Uh, married children and three mm -hmm. grandchildren, but they're getting a divorce. Why? Because they were deceived. You know, it said their heart becomes darkened, darkened. And, and, and the mind is empty and they think they're wise. They think they're wise by saying, oh, everything we have belongs to God, when in reality, nothing belonged to God because they were keeping it and doing with it what, uh, they, wanted what they wanted to do. Well, that's just not, not right. I mean, there's truth. There's truth in God's word about how we honor God. And he said, honor him with your wealth and honor him with your, your first, fruits. first fruits. And so we need to recognize that we have a responsibility to honor God in all that we do, glorify him in all that we do. I do want to talk about purpose for a moment. It, God is all about purpose. His, he focuses on on purpose and uh, that's the uh, preeminent thing to god it's purpose uh he created the whole world and he so loved the world that he gave his He's only begotten son. son that whosoever believes in him mm -hmm. should not perish but have everlasting Last life, life. that is god's purpose and that none perish so he has a purpose and, and he before the foundation of the earth, uh, he crucified Christ. Christ was crucified from the beginning. So not only did he have a purpose, but he had it clearly in mind from the beginning. Amen. Because Christ Amen. was crucified uh, before the world was created. And so that's God's purpose. God is all about purpose. And we need to be about purpose Amen. too. We're Amen. not about purpose. We're not focusing on purpose we're doing something different than god we're going away from god mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. god mm -hmm. it's all about purpose i want you to see here from uh proverbs uh, 19 21 it says many are the plans in a person's heart but it is the lord the lord's purpose that prevails okay so you can come up with all oh, kinds of plans good, good. But what is going to happen is going to be according to mm, God's mm, purpose. Mm. He saw the ending from the beginning. See, before he created the earth, mm -hmm. Christ was crucified. He, he made a plan. He knew what was going to happen. Then there's been no surprises to God. He's all-knowing. He's all-present. 
Oh, hallelujah. He Amen. has all wisdom and he has all power. Hallelujah. Nothing surprises God. It's all according to his purpose. Things are going to work. The thing that is going to prevail is God's purpose. Mm -hmm. You know, regardless mm -hmm. of what you plan, it's going to be his purpose that prevails. Now, let's move down to the next one. I like this about uh, what he has intended for me. It's mm -hmm. also going to prevail. All right, what's that? Psalms 138, verse 8. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Okay. Well, I just, I just want to stop right here. I want each one of you to think about that. That God will fulfill his purpose in you. If you will allow him to do that. If you will prosper him and honor him, then he will fulfill his purpose in you. See, I, I want you to think, what is your purpose? What is your purpose for being on this earth? When God created you, he had a purpose for you. Only you can fulfill your purpose. And it it's a lifetime of discovery. You, you have to seek first the kingdom of mm -hmm. God and his yeah. righteousness. And righteousness means doing the right thing and, and being in right standing with him and doing... Uh, the right thing. And so well, if, if we're trying to do the right thing and we're seeking him, uh, then that's going to move us towards purpose. And purpose is something you discover. You discover it by the spirit of God as you seek the kingdom first. Before anything else, you mm -hmm. seek the kingdom and the Holy Spirit will show you your purpose, what yeah. you're doing here. I hope that each of you uh, realizes Amen. what your purpose is. And if you don't, that you're at a good place because uh, the Holy Spirit <laughs> moving through in these sessions will help reveal to you what your purpose is. Amen. And that's the only thing that's going to stand in eternity. It's your purpose and have you fulfilled your destiny. I hope you Hallelujah. do. It's Hallelujah. the most important thing you can do. And otherwise you become empty and, and uh, uh, even the mind is darkened, the heart is darkened. If you're not concerned about purpose, right. we need to be right. walking in purpose. I think Sherry has something to say. Well, as we um, we went away for uh, a couple of nights, and it was to do warfare. It was to to do spiritual warfare uh, for, uh, especially for this couple that's getting a divorce. And we felt like we needed to uh, do warfare for, especially for the, the woman involved. And, and the Lord expressed to us uh, while we were uh, in intercession that it was all about his purpose for her coming forth and his destiny to be fulfilled through her and her destiny to be fulfilled uh, by him. And so Amen. that's what we pray. That's what we believe. That's see, that's where we could connect. We could connect with the Lord and partner with him to pray and intercede for her to fulfill her purpose and her destiny. That's how important it is. I think about a story I heard a minister say one time that he was praying for the people. He was going from one to another in a prayer line. They had all come up to be healed. And, and uh, by the Spirit of God, when he got to this young woman, he said uh, uh, she had told him that she wanted her arm healed. And so he said, why do you want the Lord to heal your arm? And she said, I want to be a better tennis player. And uh, he refused to, play, to pray for her then. And you might think, well, that's, that's a real uh, a harsh treatment. But, but you, you've got to realize purpose is what's important here. And, and just, mm -hmm. to, uh, just to float through life mm -hmm. and, and do your own thing, that, that's not God's purpose. God's purpose. And I'm not saying that God didn't heal her and the minister didn't uh, eventually pray for her mm -hmm. and that she didn't have a change in heart. Because I don't know. I don't know what the situation was. But he was led by the Spirit of God. And he couldn't pray for that young woman because she had no idea about purpose. And it was just all about her 
uh, about her desire. Nat natural, natural desires. Okay, now I, I get down to this uh, in Isaiah <clears throat> 53, verse 10, and uh, might not be right there, but Isaiah 53, verse 10, and this is really about the um, core of this message tonight. And when Jesus was on the cross, uh, when Jesus was on the cross, he fulfilled God's will. Mm -hmm. He fulfilled God's will. And, and, and there's several things in this verse uh, that, that are important. And, and one thing, uh, we see several words are interchangeable. God's will, his purpose, his desires, and uh, his pleasure. All of those are interchangeable. Mm -hmm. They're all found in the word of God. Mm -hmm. And they, they mean the same thing, even though it looks like different words, uh, because what pleases God is his purpose. Oh, yeah. And the end of the verse says that the Lord Jesus Christ prospered God. He prospered God by mm. doing God's will. And that's, a, that's the critical uh, point I want you to get out of this message today. We can only fulfill God's purpose for our life when we do his will. It's not our will, it's his will. Mm -hmm. And that's what Jesus did. Uh, Jesus got to the point, see, in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he prayed. And he said, not my, my will, will, but your will be done. And so and what he was about to do uh, the next day was terrible. He was going to go to the cross and be crucified. And and uh, they were going to do terrible, terrible things to it. We can't even imagine in our mind what what uh, was going to happen. But he said, not my will, but your will. So so mm -hmm. he, he turned to God's will. He was going to do God's will. And when he did that, mm -hmm. uh, on Isaiah 53, 10, we see that he prospered God. So the same thing for you and me. When we do God's will, we prosper him. When we do our will, we rob from God. That's the bottom line. Let me say it again. When we do God's will, we prosper him. When we uh, do our will, we're robbing God of the honor that he is, that he is due. Mm -hmm. that, that's a simple message, but there it yeah, is. Yeah. We need to prosper God. And when we prosper God, when we do his will, we prosper God. So I'm going to ask Sherry to read this um, uh, verse, and it's out of the expanded uh, translation of the Bible. Isaiah 53, 10. But it was the <clears throat> Lord who decided the Lord's will to crush him and make him suffer. The Lord made his life a penalty, a sin offering, but he will still see his descendants, his offspring, his seed, and live a long life extend these days he will complete the things the lord wants him to do the pleasure will purpose of the lord okay let, let's will just, prosper in his hands look at all those things they're saying all of these things are the same they're, what are the pleasure the pleasure his will his will purpose and his purpose they're all interchangeable and you find them all in the word of god so you search for the kingdom you search for doing the right thing and being in right standing with God. You find that. And when you do his will, his purpose, then you prosper him. That's what Jesus did mm -hmm. on the cross. It looked like he, he was going through a terrible ordeal and a terrible defeat, but he was prospering God. He was Amen. doing Amen. God's will. Now I get down to four applications uh, of this, of this message related to offerings and the first one is Cain and Abel let me just give you a little bit of background here Cain and Abel and this is Genesis chapter 4 and like I say we're going to talk about four different examples and and uh, Abel brought uh, the first fruits of the animals and so there was a blood sacrifice see God's always required a blood sacrifice now Cain brought a different kind of offering. He brought grain. There was no blood sacrifice, but God has always required blood. Even in the New Testament, he requires the blood of Jesus. So we come to him through the blood of Jesus. 
And so Cain didn't have a blood offering, but he brought a big offering. That's the point I want to make here. Mm -hmm. Adam and Eve, Adam, no, I'm sorry, Abel, Cain and Abel bought, both brought big offerings, but Cain's offering was not appropriate. It was not what God wanted. And God spoke to him and said, hey, there is sin at your door. Sin is crouching at your door. Mm -hmm. You can go off and, and come back and bring the right offering and that'll be okay. And that, see, God was warning him to correct the situation. He had, he had brought an offering, but it was his will. It was Cain's mm -hmm. will. It wasn't God's will. God's will required a blood offering, a blood sacrifice. Abel presented that. Abel was in good standing. He was in right standing. But Cain, see, he was angry. He was angry because mm -hmm. he wanted to give what he wanted to do. He, he just wanted to do his will. Uh, he didn't want to give a big offering. He wanted God's blessings upon him. And evidently Adam and Eve had taught him taught the two boys about that, uh, but he wouldn't do it God's way. And see, God's way is consistent with his will, his purpose, mm -hmm. what pleases mm -hmm. him, what he, what he desires. So Cain then uh, got mad. Uh, he was angry, he was bitter, and he killed his brother Abel. So mm -hmm. God gave him the opportunity to go back and bring the right kind of offering but he was going to do it his way, his will. So that's mm -hmm. the first example. The second one uh, is a man named Akan. And this is in Jud, uh, Joshua chapter seven. And let me give you a background again, uh, the background. And that is um, Israel, the nation had gone in, their army had gone in, surrounded Jericho and brought the walls down. And you know that story brought the walls down and they conquered Jericho. And so Jericho was a, a, a shut up city and is a very powerful a group of people, but they were destroyed by uh, the army of Israel. And so they were feeling uh, triumphant and they, they had a lot of, uh, they were proud uh, about their situation and, the, and they decided to go down and, and conquer a little bitty town, just a little bitty town. Mm -hmm. And so they said, well, we don't need to send all of our soldiers down there. We'll just send a few. So they sent a few down there, but they got beaten in battle. And so that, so they came back and, and uh, the elders began to seek the Lord and what has happened. And, and it turned out they identified that a con had done something unrighteous mm -hmm. and, and the, it goes back to what happened at Jericho because Jericho, God said, this is my, the first fruits. Uh, everything, all the gold, all the silver, all the raiment that you find in Jericho, set it aside to honor God. Mm. That, that's oh, the, that's the message, it, honor God. Uh, but Akan, uh, he found some gold, he found some silver, and he found some good looking clothes, and he decided to keep those for himself. See, that's against God's will. It was his will. And, and so uh, mm. Joshua comes up to him in the Judges 7 and, and confronts him. And so yeah, let's Joshua see what happens. Seven. Joshua. Joshua 7. I'm sorry, Joshua 7. 7, 19 through 21. <clears throat> then Joshua <clears throat> said to Akan, My son, I implore you, give glory to the Lord, the God of Israel, and give him praise. And tell me now what you have done. Do not hide it from me. So Akan answered Joshua and said, Truly I have sinned against the Lord, the God of Israel, and this is what I did. When I saw among the spoils a beautiful robe, 200 shekels of silver, and a big bar of gold, 50 shekels in weight, then I wanted them, and I took them. And behold, they are hidden in the ground inside my tent with the silver underneath. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So all of Israel was troubled. Mm -hmm. And you know what a con means? It means troubler. He, yeah, he, he, he troubled. was a lot of yeah. trouble. He troubled the whole nation. And, they, and then they 
uh, suffered a great defeat because of what he did. And you might think, well, I can just do what I want to do. And I it's can, not going to affect and, anybody else. It's not else. going to affect anybody else. But see, in this case, it affected a whole nation. It affected a whole nation. And what you do will affect your family and you, generation after generation. So mm -hmm. we've got to do the right thing. So let's don't be like a con. What they did with a con, uh, mm -hmm. they went mm -hmm. to his tent. Uh, uh, Joshua sent some men to his tent and then they found exactly what he had said. There was that fine robe and there was that gold and that silver and they brought it back. And so what, what they did, what the nation did to a con, not only to a con, but his wife and his children and his servants and his animals, they took everything into a valley and it, and it, it, it mm -hmm. got its name from a con and his name went Troubler. And so this is the Valley of Trouble. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they stoned everybody and they heaped stones over that family over. So all of the family perished, all of the servants, mm -hmm. all of the animals, all, all the wealth, everything they had perished because he did his will and not God's will. Okay. Oh, wow. Now I want to move it to the New Testament and want to look first at Judas. Judas, and let me give you a little bit of background on Judas before Jesus said something about him. And that is Judas uh, held the treasury. Mm. So he was the treasurer for Jesus and he was stealing out of it. And if the Peter and James and John had ever found out that he was stealing uh, from the, Jesus's treasury, uh, they would have stoned him themselves, but they didn't find out. Uh, but what we see in, in uh, Judas's heart, it was all about an attitude of a heart and, and about what was being given and what was being, how the money was being used in Jesus's ministry. It wasn't even his ministry. It was Jesus's mm -hmm. ministry. And he got possessive and controlling mm -hmm of the treasury, Amen. not not his treasury, but somebody else's treasury. And, and he wanted to uh, be in charge of how the money was coming in and how it was being spent. And for example, the woman, Mary, uh, she brought an alabaster uh, box of oil and she, it was perfume. It was very expensive perfume. Judas got mad at that. He wanted the money from it. And she wanted mm. to uh, pour honor out the Jesus. honor <laughs> Jesus and pour out the oil on Jesus. Mm. But Judas's heart, well, he was so hardened in his heart and uh, mm. uh, that he wanted the money that she had spent on that. He wanted it to come into the Jesus's treasure so he could steal it. Oh, yeah. it's all about yeah. attitude of the heart. And it's and, the love of the love <laughs> of money. Oh yeah, that's the that, thing. yeah, that's the root of all evil. The love of money is the root of all evil. We saw it with Judas, and what happened on at the Last Supper? Uh, Jesus said, uh, "There's somebody going to betray him," and uh, at that time, uh, Judas he wanted to go over and make a deal with the Pharisees to turn in Jesus, mm -hmm. uh, so he could get some money. It's all about money, Judas. And I want you to read uh, from John 17, what Jesus 12. prayed and yeah. what he said. John 17, 12. While I was with them, I was keeping them in your name, which you have given me. And I guarded them. And not one of them perished except the son of destruction, perdition, lawlessness, so that the scriptures might be fulfilled. Okay, so what happened? Well... He could have followed Jesus. He could have followed. He could have been an apostle uh, even after Jesus was crucified and buried and, and resurrected. But but he got so caught up with the money and controlling the money and selling out Jesus and going over to the Pharisees and the, the religious people trying to get money, trying to get money. He got so caught up with that and a spirit of destruction came in him. And ooh, listen to me. It's a spirit of destruction. Yeah. It's called per perdition, destruction, mm -hmm. lawlessness came in there over the money, how the money was being used, how it was coming into the treasury, how it was going out. He wanted to control everything. 
He was a thief. He was a mm -hmm. thief at heart. Oh, hallelujah. Mm. But that's not the only one. The one I really want to get to yes. is Ananias. In and this is, this is in uh, Acts chapter 5. And of course, Sapphira, well, Sapphira was a uh, 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 privy of all of this and she would agree with it but I just want to focus on Ananias here and uh, tell you the story well people began when they saw the power that the apostles were operating in and they saw the resurrection of Jesus Christ they began bringing money and putting it uh, at the feet of the apostles and saying you use it to have how the Lord uh, leads you and guides you and, and so they weren't controlling things but here comes Ananias first before his wife and Ananias comes in and uh, he's going to present a big offering oh I've sold some property and his mm -hmm. wife was in agreement with this but first it's just Ananias there he's it's him uh, his heart uh, is uh, revealed to the apostles the apostles see that he brings a big offering and, and you think oh Ananias we ought to just pat him on the back because he's brought such a big offering. He sold property and he's giving a certain portion of it. But uh, Peter said, uh, you, you've lied to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it wasn't the fact that he gave a big offering. That wasn't mm -hmm. what gave him in, got him in trouble. It wasn't how big the offering was. Right, because he was free <clears throat> to give whatever he had purposed in his heart. But you can't lie. Right. <laughs> don't don't be deceitful. Don't don't be deceitful and, and say, "Oh, I'm putting out and I'm giving a tenth, or I'm I'm giving so much percentage, or I'm doing this or that." Don't don't lie uh, to the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask Sherry to read this verse. This is in Acts five one through three. But a man named Ananias with his wife Sapphira sold a piece of property and kept back some of the proceeds for themselves with his wife's full knowledge and bringing a portion of it and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back some of the proceeds of the land? Oh, wow. Very serious here. He lied to the Holy Ghost. He gave a good offering, and you think, well, he's really uh, to be commended because he brought a big offering, but he did what he wanted to do. It's, he, he did his will, not God's will. This message mm -hmm. is about doing God's will, not your will. Now, see what I want? I want to go into depth here on Ananias. And let's say he did bring a big offering, and maybe it was 50% of what God wanted him to bring mm -hmm. what God's desire was well, it, but you know as long as it was just 50 percent it was all about his will it wasn't God's will and even if it was 80 percent of what God desired it's still it's all about his will not God's will it has to be a hundred percent when God tells you what to do and God gives you a figure mm -hmm. to give gives you something to do when you do a hundred percent of it then that's God's will but if you're just doing 90% of what God tells you to do, it's all about your will. It doesn't become God's will. you doing God's mm -hmm. will until you do 100%. Ananias, see, he, he maybe did 50% or maybe he did 70% of God's will. Mm -hmm. But uh, until it's 100% of God's will, it's totally his will. He was doing his will. That's what we see with with Cain. with Cain, Cain was doing his will, not God's will. We sat, saw that with a, a Khan. Mm -hmm. He was doing his will, not God's will. God said everything Dang. in Jericho is going to be set aside for God's purposes and, and holy to, unto God. But uh, Khan did what he wanted to do. Then we get down to Judas. And again, this is the New Testament. And Judas said, <coughs> Excuse me. Judas was going to do his will, not Jesus' will. Mm -hmm. And then we get to Ananias. Ananias did his will. And Sapphira was in agreement with all of that. 
Now, so you can, when you do your will, you rob God. Oh, let's just pause mm, and think about that. Mm, mm. You do your will, you rob God. You do his will, you prosper God. Amen. Amen. The only way you can get out of God robbing, mm. many people are doing it. The only way you can get out of God robbing is giving. You need to be it's a cheerful giving. giver. Give. Give your as, time. Give your efforts. Give your finances. Give. Give as, your love. Give your honor. Give as you purpose in your heart. Otherwise, you're robbing God. Oh, Amen. Uh, that's Amen. really an important message. I hope you get a hold of it. I want to say thank you for being here today. That's a very simple message. Do your will, you rob God. You do God's will, you prosper him. Thank you for being here. I'm going to turn it over to Sherry. Well, I'm going to speak <clears throat> some things over this group and because I believe that every single one of you has a purpose and a, a destiny and God's will uh, is is what he wants for each one of you. So I speak over you that you will desire to do the will of the Father in everything you do, in your work, in your uh, what you're doing in, in your church congregation, uh, what you're doing in your family, in your marriage, uh, that you will do the will of the Lord and that you will prosper God in Jesus' name. Now, I also want to speak over you the fulfillment of your purpose Amen. and destiny Amen. in Jesus' name. <clears throat> and if there are any hindrances there, any uh, what we pray over each one of you every day is if there's any proud obstacles, anything that would hinder your walk with the Lord, uh, any type of wrong thinking, any type of of uh, uh, robbing of God, uh, any type of pride uh, that is in your in your heart or in your life, that the the Holy Spirit will come and invade your thinking, invade your heart, invade your spirit, man, and get rid of anything that would hinder uh, the will of the of the Lord being manifested in in you. And and so Father right now we pray in Jesus name. We ask your forgiveness for anything that we've done that has not honored you, that has not given you glory, uh, anything that has been deceitful or that has been a lie. Lord, we ask you to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We receive your forgiveness right now Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. You know, every single day is is a new a new start Amen. for us. It's a new day. And we can we can say, Lord, here, here we are, and we want to do your will today. So I'm gonna open up the 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 session and and just hear from you. Uh what have you <clears throat> gained from from this uh, message uh, tonight. Uh, we thank you, and, and we should be back with you next Tuesday night. Uh, we pray for Mary. Mary's not here tonight, and we we ask uh, the Lord to uh, to be with her and to protect her and to uh, pour out His blessings upon her in the name of Jesus. Amen. Sister Sherry and Dr. White and, and brother, the new sister, Liu Jie, her English name is Victoria. She's my friend. She lives in Durham in the local. She just came to visit us. Oh, and, wonderful. Yeah, she's from China. Okay. Okay. Oh, good. And, and she's with us here? Yeah. They, could you show your face? Oh, there you are. <laughs> wonderful. And her name is Tommy. Yes, <laughs> welcome, welcome. And and her name is Victoria. And Tommy, Tommy's from Taiwan, but he lives in mainland China for many years before he came over. Okay, okay, okay. Well, thank you so much for, for joining us tonight. So what have you received from this message? Oh, it's, it's, go ahead, Tommy, do you want to say something? 
Oh, actually, we, we, we just joined the meeting, so we... we oh, okay. <laughs> Ask for the recording? Uh, yes, it, the recording will uh, be up on YouTube um, uh, tomorrow morning. Oh, thank you so much. Yes, yes. It was about prospering God and not robbing him. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so, yes, that's uh, it'll be up there. How, how can they find it, Freddie? Uh, um... Join us. Okay. I, I'll give them the link. I'll share the, I'll share the link with them later. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <clears throat> so are they in China right now? Or are they no, in... they're in Durham in North Carolina. Oh, okay. okay. They're Wonderful. in the same church right now. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay, good. Well, it's, it's great to have you with us. Thank you. Okay. Somebody else have something they want to share? Yeah. Oh. Well, well, sorry. Can you say that? Okay, Lucy? Oh, I just want to say thanks for the message. Um, I look forward to our Tuesday uh, meeting. So thank you very much. I could I got bits and pieces because Luke's quite active these days. Um, but I just want to say thank you. And I have to go get him to sleep. And I have to go back in to work. So All right. <laughs> All right. God bless you. We pray blessings over you and Luke and Kevin in the name of Jesus. Yes, yes. Thank you. It's Nana Sherry. Say hi. Say bye. <laughs> she can say bye sometimes. Say bye. 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 I mean, uh, I think the um, what I get is that when we do God's will, we honor Him and we prosper God, and yes. and this way we allow Him to fulfill our purpose, His purpose for us. Yes. And yes. The if we want to do our own will, then we rob God, and God's will cannot be done in our lives. Yes, yes. That's, right. that's right. That's exactly Good. right. That's exactly right. Good, Joy. Good. Yeah. Thank you very much. Does someone else have something? Oh, can, okay. can we can we have a prayer request? Maybe like sure, sure. Yeah, we're we're, we're going through like um like uh we basically uh are buying a house and then we're we're close to the closing uh like date. Um, then I guess the prayer requests right now uh, are are two two specific items. Uh, one is uh, we're um, I wouldn't say it's an issue, but it's like we're going through some visa uh, thing right now. And then just please pray for the process to go smooth with our uh, visa. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Basically, the the, the visa will, will be smoothly de delivered. So that's that's the first thing. Uh, and then the, the second thing will be just uh, right now uh, we're looking for uh, a lender um, okay. for the house. Yeah. And then yeah, originally we thought we, we thought we already kind of finalized the lender today. Uh, but uh, yeah, we realized uh, we, we don't have like the kind of the status, the visa status to, to apply for that. Uh, to oh, apply goodness. For that lender. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Well, you know, the Lord, you know, True humility is when we cast everything over on the Lord. And so that's what you just did uh, by asking us to pray uh, with you in, in agreement. And this whole group uh, is a powerful group. And so we all agree with, with you uh, and your wife that the process of uh, being able to buy a house is going to go smoothly and that the Lord is going to go ahead of you yes, in this that you will not have to struggle, you will not have to battle uh, with the enemy over this, but that the Lord will bring it to you in the name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. In the name Amen. of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. He Amen. says that if we humble ourselves, then he will exalt us and in due time. And I truly believe that. And so what you just did, you just, you cast it over on the Lord and we took it to the Lord. And so... We see you and your wife in a beautiful home. 
in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the Thank name you. of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> also, there's someone that that you've been having difficulty with the 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 um, the right part of your back. It's uh, almost where um, your right kidney is. Uh, the the Lord is healing that right now in the name of Jesus, uh, and, and causing it to function uh, properly. Amen. It's it hasn't stopped functioning altogether, but it has been uh, difficult for it to function. And so, receive your healing right Amen. now in the name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Also, um, headaches and there's been a lot of stress. I see it in the in the back of your neck, uh, going down your spinal uh, column uh, right now. Uh, just receive healing uh, from from those headaches, and also the stress level that you've been under is. Uh, uh, I just ask the Lord to come in and bring peace in every situation Amen. of your life. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. And that those headaches will go away. And your spinal area will be healed and whole uh, in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Thank Amen. you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You know, what stress can do is is um, uh, very um, uh, serious. And we need to take it seriously and take it to the Lord. Uh, and when we start feeling that we're... We're getting overwhelmed uh, by by something. Then we need to, right then, we need to stop and take it to the Lord. Amen. And uh, not wait until it gets to a point where we have headaches or stomach aches or our legs begin to hurt. Um, so, uh, Joy, do you have something to 